Yokoso, Japanese Quest Toy. Welcome to Japanese Quest. Today the journey continues. Let's jump into the game. I like how the hat jumped from her head to the sword. For our title today, the game is Final Fantasy Adventure in English, in Japanese, Seiken Densetsu. This is a trilogy of the first three. We're going to do the first one. We are getting nearer, more near to the end. So we will continue. Let's see, continue there in Katakana. Okay, let's refresh where we were. We fell down. And this is kind of the moment in all JRPGs where the, the protagonist loses hope, thinks it's time to go home, they're not powerful enough. See, this is our mentor. His name, Bogado. I guess maybe like Humphrey Bogard type of character. Anyway, he won't even talk to us now, as you can see. In Japanese, it's common to have a lot of dots like this to indicate silence. Sometimes you just see six, sometimes more. Onegai! Ano hito no bun made. Gambatte. Okay, so again, this character is saying we need to go hard. Not just for us, but for Anohito, that person as well. Bun means like a part. So for his part too, Gambatte, do your best. Save the world. In other words, we will try. Konnichiwa. Kono sekai dewa. It's nice when you're reading a sentence, and often it's the case with Japanese. You can kind of set up right away what you're going to be learning about. So here it's kono, this, so this what is it going to be? This world. Kono sekai dewa. So in this world, mizu no ue o so that's a problem because we need to go up the waterfall. Uh, I believe... Or this could mean just move over water as well. So the problem is we're missing... This. The technology. Gijutsu technology. Gijutsu wa... So it's still not developed. Hmm. So we need to find some way around this problem. Demo, but. So. But. If we meet someone named Bon Voyage then possibly we could do it. Maybe it is possible. Here's a key word here. Kano. Possible. And then this means maybe. Kano. Kamoshirai. So it's maybe possible. So I guess Bon Voyage, this guy we need to find, who's good with machines. Uh, he's living in the house. Let's see where. So Nishi West. Nishi no Hazure. So kind of the western outskirts of the town. And where is he living? So Ni can point to where. 
Yeni. So he lives in a house to the west. And then he describes him. Henna Oyachi. Okay, so he's a strange old man. Hen means strange. So well, let's find that guy. First, let's make sure we go to the inn, because we're all out of uh, magic points, I believe. We're almost out. So yeah, um, Yasu means to heal, so heal your tired body. Hi. Maido. So thank you for your continued patronage. Nice for Max out. Koko wa Ishu no machi. So this is the village, the town of Ishu. Izen Okina Chikaro Tenireta Bandoro Te Koko wa Kono Chiho Chushin ni shite Sakaita. Okay, so he's talking about a time before Izen. Before. So this empire, Teikoku, means empire. That could be a good word to add if we don't have it. Let's go to our power up list. So, what we do on Japanese Quest, we look at words and uh, we level up as we go. We don't need that. Uh... Let's delete that. Okay. So let's see if we have that word here already. We find new words, power level goes up in the language. Okay, there we go. Huh. Looks like we've not learned that yet. As you can see in the game, it's just hiragana, but this is a game you see all the time in video games. So let's go to our power-up screen and let's look at our dictionary. Jisho. So Teikoku. Empire. Imperial. Atlas Discovered is now a party member. Yokoso. Japanese Quest away. Welcome to Japanese Quest. Anyone else here for the first time? Welcome. So this is a game... What, am I, what do I mean this is a game? This is a word that I've seen. Uh, Atlas discovered first time. Nice. How did you find the stream if it's your first time? If, if you don't mind me asking. So this word here. I remember first seeing all the time when I was playing Final Fantasy VI in Japanese. Because that, one, that game also is about a huge empire that has mech and is taking over the world. Similar kind of scenario. Recommended channels advertised it to me. Interesting. Recommended channels. I don't even know what that really is on Twitch. Huh. That's cool. So let's uh, copy this to our power level list. So power level is now 1331. All these words, the past 20 words we have here. We got last stream from looking just at game menus. There's a special episode. Looking at the game menus in this game, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy X, and Dragon Quest XI. Kind of looking at the evolution of game menus in Japanese. If you want to check that out, it's now on YouTube. Well, no, it's not. I think tomorrow will be on YouTube. It is, however, on Twitch. So now our power level has gone up. Let's go to the world of Japanese Quest. That's it. What does the scouter say about his power level? So anyone just joining, you might have heard Nappa there asking what's our power level. Power level has now just gone up, so our power level is now 1331. By the way, I'm a Japanese teacher. My name is Akira. 
What we do on this channel is we learn Japanese from Japanese games. Some might ask, is that a good way to learn Japanese? My answer is... I don't know. But I will do the best that I possibly can to do that. Kind of an experiment, this channel. And we've been experimenting now for almost two years. Let's make that power level go up in the bottom right. Take a look. Power level is now 1331. Let's go back to the game. By the way, welcome Mitzer, welcome Atlas. Let's go. Let's think, any other words here? Well, let's keep moving the game for now. Sometimes just having some pace is a good thing. Seike no motta gemma no kishi no katsuyaku ni yotte haku no teikoku wa horonda. Okay, so this is an important sentence right here. Why is it important? Because it has the title of the game right there. Can you see it? This game in Japanese is called Seiken Densetsu. It's, uh, in English, it was Final Fantasy Adventure. This word here, the first half means holy. Ken means sword. So Seiken, the holy sword. So who had this holy sword? Uh, motsu means to hold. This is the past tense, marked by ta here. So seiken o motta, gemma no kishi. So the key noun here are these knights, the gemma knights who had this holy sword, and because of them, because of their hard work, this evil empire was destroyed. Horobu. crumbled or to be destroyed and then for this empire again we see teikoku this word we just learned empire but this time it's not just an empire it's a special kind of empire aku no teikoku cool thing about japanese anyone just joining uh pretty much all words are modified by the words that come before so this word here empire is modified by these words that you see that come before. So aku means evil. No can connect those. So aku no teikoku, evil empire. Okay, so now let's see. Hmm. Sore no iseki no kazu kazu ga kono garasu no sobaku no shita ni nemuru. Okay, so now the empire is no longer there. What now is there is ruins. Let's look this word up. Sometimes on Japanese quests we look up words. As we go, sometimes we add them to our power level. So let's look it up. So historic ruins, archaeological site. So now the empire is no longer there, but now we have these ruins. And they sleep underneath this desert that he's talking about. Some keywords here. Sabaku, desert. And now what desert is it? The desert of Garasu, the name of the desert. So most likely we'll have to find these ruins, possibly to find this sword. Ah, konnichiwa, we got some new people here. Juriyasu no jikara de yomigaeta. Akuma Ah, okay. AJK, hey, konnichiwa. Good to see you. Okay, so we have a problem now. 
in this area. So this is where we see a lot on Japanese quest, chikara, power. And so de marks so using this power. So whose power is it? The power of Julius. So because of his power, Akumatachi. So all these bad creatures have been attacking other towns, machi towns. And then Izuremo Kokomo, or Izurewa Kokomo. So eventually, Izure, eventually, Koko, here. So eventually, he will attack here as well. Yokunai ne! Not good. Bandoru no bunmei wa fuante na jiban ni to tateru koto uh, or kodo na gijutsu. It's kind of hard to read because this is all in katakana. Normally kanji is there, which makes parsing words more easily. So the part that kind of trips me up is this one. Kodo means like high level. Uh, na is for a na adjective. So it's modifying the thing next. Again, we see this word for technology. Gijutsu. So advanced technology, they had it. What did they have it for? Uh, let's see. So this culture, this civilization, Bunme means like a civilization. This Bandaru civilization. Um, so even on unstable ground, Fuante means like unstable. Jiban means like the ground or the crust of the earth. Uh, to o tateru. So we're talking about building a tower. To, tower, and then tateru, to build. And uh, so they had the technology to do that. I'm guessing that must be important at some point here. So let's think, should we learn any of these words? Our power level, I think, should probably go up some more today. Let's uh, go to our power level screen. So you can see Goku powering up as he learns words. Power level goes up one word learned. Power level goes up by one. So let's think about what words we might add to our power level. This is our list so far. Let's see, for example, that word for civilization. I think we have learned this. Let's just double check. So we can see that word there. Bunme, civilization. And we can see there we have already learned it. The way we know is if it turns green. So words that turn green are doubles. Sometimes it's okay if they have different pronunciations. For example, these two words, two different ways to read it. Nushi for like the head of a household and then Omo for like the main something or other. That's an adjective. But in this case, we've learned it already, so we don't need that. Let's see, what else can we learn? What about this word for t tower? That we may not have. And towers are key to a lot of games. Plus, it's, you can see it's an N3 word, so pretty basic word. Tower or pagoda. Let's see if we can't add that to our power level. Eh, nande? We've learned that already too. On then. Anyway, good review. How about unstable? That could even be a good word. Let's just first do stable. So, ante, stable, equilibrium, stability, N3 word, common. Why don't we add that to our power level? The opposite of the word that we see in the game there, but we could add both. So this we have not learned yet, so let's now do the opposite of that. We like to learn words in pairs. Often you can lessen the work for your brain if you learn word in meaning clusters.
SKK Knight. Yo ko so. Japanese Quest away. Welcome to Japanese Quest. Anyone else watching for the first time, welcome. I am Akira. Everyone else here you see chatting or who has followed. We like to consider everyone here a party member in this role playing game where we level up with Japanese. I'm a Japanese teacher in the US. This is what we do every stream. We learn Japanese from Japanese games, so welcome. So now we have both words. So you, these might look like words that are a little tricky, but to be honest, these words you will see all the time, especially if you might read the news. Things are always stable or unstable. Ante, fuante. Okay, let's go to our next word or our next sentence here. Again, we're talking about this empire, this word we learned today. Teikoku, empire. In this case, an evil empire. As Are empires ever not evil? Empires are generally evil, it seems like. At least in JRPGs. Teikoku no shinboru tomo iwareta. Daimu no towa. Okay, so now we're talking about, about a specific tower that was the symbol of the empire. Ah, Yellow Ninja, come on, Manwa. Saw you on the Discord. Good to see you on stream as well. So, Imo Demo, so even now. Chichu Fukaku de. Ikizuite iru toyu. Okay, so Chichu means underground, and then Fukai means deep, so deep underground. It is said that this tower that was the symbol of this empire is still out there somewhere. And to be honest, I don't like that there's this tower underground somewhere, because that probably means there's a massive dungeon underground somewhere. And I'm on record of saying... If dungeons get too big, I'm not a huge fan. I like towers, but I like looking at them, not grinding in them, you might say. Good music. I think we're not done here yet, though. Let's look for uh, the guy that we heard about that's good with machines. I think we need something from him, potentially. Yeah. Um, good comment in chat. It helps a lot. You need spaces, really. I mean, if you think about it. If there were no kanji in Japanese, it'd in a way be like English. You would need spaces. So English has spaces. The reason in Japanese you don't need them is because of kanji. Again, you see a space there. Again, you see multiple spaces there. And really, you need them to help parse the sentence properly. Uh, you'll notice there aren't spaces between all words. For example, words that are linked by adjectives. Okina, chikara. So like a, a big power, a great power, are kind of joined together. And then phrases like this, te ni ireta, so gained acquire something. And again, we have the name of this empire, plus the particle wa. Haunted Bone is now a party member. Yokoso. Welcome to Japanese Quest. So Yellow Ninja says, I use spaces while I learned hiragana in class. Yeah, it helps a lot if you're just with hiragana. But to be honest, later on, if you learn kanji, it becomes easier if it's just kanji Hiragana, katakana, and usually no spaces. Because kind of the difference, the word barriers you'll see, because chikara will be in kanji. Right? And then oki will be in kanji. 
and then just the Kina, I believe, will be in Kana. Anyway, <laughs> I'm writing it very bad. I didn't even write the na properly. But you get the idea. It helps you parse the sentence to have kanji, and then kana, and then katakana. So we read this already, so we'll move on. We want to go west. That is not west. That's in the inn. Let's go this way. Here we go. This is probably where we need to be. Eh, nani? Eh. So this is the guy we we're looking for. His name is Bonboyaji, or Bonboyaji. So Bon Voyage is his name. Hore chocobo ga ikikai da zoi. Okay, so I think this is our chocobo, which has come back to life. So I think it was in bad shape when we fell into this kind of hell-type space, I guess they called it at the time. So we both almost died. Kega no hirokatta kahanshi no mecha ni shite. Eh? Okay, so this is awesome. Uh... Check it out. Our Chocobo is now a robot. I don't think this has ever happened, really, in Final Fantasy that I know of. So he's half mech. His lower half is now, like, wheels or something, or a boat. So how do we say that? Mecha. Mecha niste. So let's look at that word. Let's look that up, actually. Let's go to our power level list. Perhaps we can also, on Japanese Quest, level up with the power of machines. Here we go. So, common word, katakana. You can see it's an abbreviation for mechanism or mechanics, mechanical. You can see different variants of the katakana, like mechanism, but we can just learn mecha. And check it out, sci-fi genre 2, uh, like a mecha can also be a giant robot, obviously, like a Gundam. So I feel like now is the time to level up with the power of mecha. We now have our own Japanese quest mech because of this game. If we haven't learned it before, tell me we haven't. We have not. Graphis, graf, Graficus Pixel Art is now a party member, good timing. Because now we're going to go to our pixel art, the world of Japanese Quest. Real quick, a comment. Haunted Bone, sorry about not saying anything right before I followed, but I saw this stream and was interested right away. I've been interested in learning Japanese for a while because of the media. Wanting to understand it. Hopefully these streams can teach me all I can. Cool. Where's this channel been all my life? Uh, the answer is probably... Below... About 50 other channels on your Twitch feed. <laughs> I think it's kind of hard to have discovery on Twitch because there's so many streams and so much content. It's hard to find what you maybe might want to find. It's hard for me too. I always am trying to find new Japanese streamers. So now let's go to the world of Japanese Quest. So Nappa just asked, what is our power level? I think it did go up. So let's make our power level go up actually. It just went up with the power of mech. Look at the bottom right. Power level is now 1,334. That's all the words we've learned so far on Japanese Quest. So graphic... Graphicus pixel art. This is my best job at pixel art. I know it's... Not perfect is the best I could do. That's what this whole channel is. I'm a Japanese teacher. That is what I'm expert at. That's what I get paid for. All these other things are more... Well, maybe not in my forte, but now our power level is 1334. So this right here is the world of Japanese Quest. You can see here, it's a world built with language. All the words we've learned so far, 
build this world. It's a world shared in the sub subconscious of everyone who has joined Japanese Quest. Z Wagner, welcome. So for example, Z Wagner here is also in this world of Japanese Quest. Also has a chance to have their power level go up. Graphic pixel art who just joined is also here. Anyone else watching, feel free to follow or join our YouTube, which is now being updated every day for at least the next week, I would say. Uh, Yellow Ninja says, would you ever stream a game that is a visual novel? Yes, I absolutely would. We probably will do that at some point. And so you can see this world of Japanese Quest. As we learn new words, new things are unlocked. For example, here's the word for lake. Mizumi. We are now being raided. Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome to the world of Japanese Quest. This channel is kind of strange. I'm a Japanese teacher, and we're building a world. If you're into building a new world together with language, that is what we do here. All the words we learn from games, like this, Kawa, River, Sakura, Cherry Blossom, Mizumi, Lake, all these words. We level up together. Current power level, 1,334. That's how many words we've learned so far on Japanese Quest. Our power level is rising. Anyone else, else who follows becomes a party member on this quest. This could be you, whether you're watching now, live, or later on YouTube. Is this you? It's badly drawn. Probably you, though. Could be me. Could be a guy watching 10 years from now. Anyway, let's get back to the game. Yosh, ikimashou. So Mitzer says that's me. I knew I had drawn someone. Wasn't sure who. So anyway, the reason I went to that world, let's go back really quickly. What does the scouter say about his power level? So we just learned this new world. Uh, we just learned this new word, mecha. It's just two things in katakana, two characters. Mecha, mecha. So it can mean... As you probably know, a giant robot. So really quickly in the world of Japanese Quest, let's add this giant robot, which we have now unlocked with the power of language from this game. In the game we're playing, Final Fantasy Adventure, this character just created, created a mech out of our chocobo. So we have now unlocked a mecha that can help us fight. You see this creature in the distance? There are kaiju lurking in the seas beyond in the world of Japanese quest but now we are not defenseless before we had some things like we had the power of swords Ken we had the power of cats Nako but now we have the power of this badly drawn mech it will come in handy trust me you might not know what I mean but we're gonna have some weird content they will utilize this battle right here at some point. Why? This creature here is weak to language. Specifically Japanese. Anyway, let's keep going to the game. For anyone new, I don't want to scare them off by getting too... Too strange. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, Nazukete Chocobo... Chocoboto. So it's not a Chocobo anymore. Now we have a Chocobot. Check it out. So Choco is the first part of Chocobo. A bow is part of that too, right? But now it's Boto. So we have a Chocobot. Chocobo robot. Right here. Kore de. So Kore means this. So using this, de is a very useful particle. It's to mark the means for doing something. Exactly, Yellow Ninja. The power of mech, mecha no chikara. So, with this power, mizu no ue. So, above the water. So, ue means above. Mizu, water. Mizu no ue mo. Sui sui ja. So, yeah, you can just slide above the water now.
What's the... The Ritsu? After Chocobot? Uh... Do you mean the small Tsu here? If that's what you mean, it's a small Tsu for this word Botto. It's kind of like a double T, B-O-T-T-O. Botto. And if you mean this small Tsu here, it can kind of mean like the sentence is dropping off abruptly. Kind of a feeling of a shortened ending, like this guy's really excited and he might have a kind of unique way of speaking. But yeah, it's not, it's not something to probably worry about too much. The last five characters at the top row. Last four. Yeah, so the toe is the end of uh, the Chocobot. And then Dai. Dai is kind of a, a different way of saying like Da or Desu. So that's just the ending you see there. Let's go to the power level up screen. We might as well look it up, see what we see there. So we looked up Mecha, we now have the power of Mecha, I believe. We did update our power level, right? Let's type in... So, Dai can have a number of meanings. Like title, number... You see the fun of Japanese? There's so many different meanings. Let's uh, delete our drawing here. Can mean large. Okay. This is more what we're looking at, though. So it can be used as a question to say, like, isn't it? Or is it? But it can also mean, like, is or be strengthened one's judgment or conclusion. That's probably what we're seeing here. It's not something you see that much. This character is a kind of a eclectic, kind of eccentric, strange character. He's uh, speaking in kind of an un unusual way. But yeah, you're right, it can mean great as well. Let's get back into the game. So here's our new Chocobot. <laughs> okay, so we're saying we can't win against something. So katsu means to win. Katenai is the negative of that. So what we're saying is to our chocobo, our chocobot now. So I can't win against your something. So omai means you. Kind of very casual way to say you. Don't say this to Japanese people. Omai, very impolite. But if you're talking to a robot, a robot chocobo, they probably don't care what you call them. Omai no hitomi ni. So his eyes, so he's kind of like his eyes, his kind of earnestness, he cannot win against that. So, anyway, when he st when our Chocobot stares deep into our eyes like that, we can't, we can't turn him down. Uh, why are we talking about Fist of North Star now? I see. Omae wa mo shindeiru. Oh. Okay, so this is why this is important. Because before this moment, this is kind of the moment in this JRPG. There's always a moment like this in JRPGs. We were kind of in our down moment. We fell to the farthest down place in the world. They called it hell. We thought that we, were, we weren't strong enough. We couldn't beat this uh, Shadow Knight. We thought... We were too weak, we uh, we gave up, we were going to go home. Just like earlier when we were playing Xenoblade 2, the same thing happened with Rex. He wanted to give up. Uh, but now, looking at our Chocobo, our will to fight, our will to save the world, has come back. So what is that? How do we say that? Iku means to go. Uh, ki means like the feeling. So put it together. Iku ki ni natta. So now we are feeling like we can go. 
Smoked Cheese has now joined our party. Welcome, welcome. Let's go back to the world of Japanese Quest. What does the scouter say about his power level? I'm not sure if we learned the word cheese, but now we have... We have been joined by Smoked Cheese, so let's draw a big thing of cheese here. Because this may come in handy. Sometimes we gain power from the game, sometimes we gain power from those who join us. So, I see a question up there. At this point, whenever I hear the word, oh my. Just to the North Star is going to get a reference. Ah, oh, fair enough, fair enough. Have you heard of Kamen Rider? I have heard it, I don't think I've really seen it. In anime, yeah, it's super common, super common. Probably don't want to say it in real life, though. And no, there's very little that's off-topic, at least if it's related to J Japan or Japanese. Everything is pretty much fair game. Uh, let's look at the word cheese. I think we probably have learned the word cheese already, but just, we need to check. Because the power of cheese is something important. You can see it's with katakana here, end three word, common word. You can see the dash in the middle, marking a long vowel sound. Cheese it can be used when saying, taking photographs as well, in Japan. What? We have not learned it! So if we have learned a word, it would show up green as a duplicate. This word though is fair game, so let's power up now. We have powered up with the power of mech, now we can power up with the power of cheese, also very important. Two very important powers today. This has been more eventful than I thought today on Japanese Quest. Let's make our power level go up. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? Back to the world of Japanese Quest. Power level is now 1335. This this music is getting intense, so really quick I want to show you. A possible next game we're going to play is Final Fantasy X Remastered. Uh, someone asked about a visual novel. This one is amazing for the Switch. There's a free demo, by the way, too, in the Japanese store. It's coming out in October in English as well. Raging Loop, it's called. Raging Loop. But let's look at this. We may play that sometime. Let's look at this question over here. Uh, so Haunted Bone says I played... I watched a nice amount of Kamen Rider. A lot of puns and English. Sounds interesting. And then Chinazo says, question. Do people sometimes drop the E? Yeah, you do. It's often dropped when you're doing the te idu form. I've been listening a lot to a lot of anime. Yeah, it's often dropped in casual speech. That's a very good question. Smoked cheese, welcome. Uh... <laughs> Smoke cheese. Did you look that up too? Nice. Awesome. We've now gained the power of cheese on Japanese Quest because of you. Very important power as well. I was just in Wisconsin last weekend. I walked on a bridge from Wisconsin to Minnesota for the first time near this town called Danbury. Nice bridge, I recommend if anyone's ever there. Uh... I live in Minnesota, so making that walk, it's kind of fun. I recommend it if anyone is near there. The reason I mentioned it, Wisconsin also has the power of cheese, so perhaps it's fate that we're all here today, leveling up with cheese powers. Let's go. So now we are again ready to save the world. Tabini Derumaini. So before we go out on our journey, some really good keywords here. Uh, this is a big word for Japanese quest because it means journey. This here, what we do, it's a journey. A journey to level up in Japanese. So tabini did it. So before you go on your journey, so maini means before. So before we go on our journey, uh, this guy, this is our mentor, Bokado no Jisa no. Tokonite. So go to uh, where this guy is. Toko means place. It can also be tokoro. 
Uh, ayamate kina. And go apologize. Here's the key verb here. Ayamaru. Uh, anyone watching for the first time, if you have not seen much Japanese before, a really good way to think of Japanese, I'm right now reading a Japanese grammar book that's written for Japanese people. It's all in Japanese. And, uh, but it's telling the newest theory on grammar that's taught to foreigners. And I thought it explained it in quite a good way. The way they broke it down is Japanese sentences, the most important generally comes at the end. Uh, and it's almost always either a verb, an adjective, or a noun. Here we have a verb. And everything that comes before that modifies this foundational verb at the end. This foundational verb for the sentence. So, for example, tabeni, tabini, so on this journey. So, because of this journey, because you're going on this journey, so this maini, so before you go on this journey, make sure you do this. So, what kind of apology is, is it? It's an apology that you must make before you go on this journey. So, generally, it can help if you look at the end of the sentence and think about the things before that are modifying that. And the way you know how they're modifying it is by looking at the particle. So this ni is pointing direction. This my ni is all kind of a part that's important, so before something. So no, showing possession. Anyway, I haven't finished the book yet, but I think it's giving me some good ideas for some new future content that I might do on YouTube. We're going to have some exclusive content, maybe with beginner materials, breaking down the core idea of Japanese at some point in the future. Uh, Haunted says, love your cat in the corner, boy or girl, it's a boy cat. Griffin is his name. So I should actually use this channel for my Anki deck instead of Core. Uh, I'm not sure if I would want to <laughs> go that far, but uh, I'll take it as a compliment. Our words at times can get a bit strange, whereas the Core is hopefully all core words that you'd need to know. But it's true, these are all good words for games generally, although... The word cheese may not come up in many games that we'll cover here. Okay, so we are going to apologize. Yeah, Haunted, that's very true. It's all different kanji. And that's the fun of Japanese. Okay, so let's go back and apologize to our mentor who we said we are giving up and no longer gonna try to save the world. Let's apologize to him here. Wagatte ita yo. Sore de koso. Jema no kishi da. So he's saying, I knew it. That's what it is to be a a knight of Gemma. Let's look at some of the key words here. Uh, Danthro, good question. Uh, I think it, it can be the same, but it can have a different nuance. But I feel like even me, I'd have to see it more in context to really know exactly exactly the nuance. Let's go look at the dictionary though, because that's kind of a question that arouses my curiosity as a Japanese teacher. 
Okay, so here we see Tommy. Hair on the head. If you keep going down, we see what he referenced here. Tommy no ke. So it's hair also on the head. So one thing that can help is doing a sentence, sentence search, either on this or another dictionary. So it's talking about there's oil in the hair and it's natu natural state. He combed back his hair. So it kind of seems like it's kind of talking about the hair as a whole or as a greater idea kind of feeling. So Mr. There says, a Japanese site says, right. Okay. So this site says that Kami by itself is used for like all of the hair growing on the head. And to talk about all the hairs kind of individually. You talk about kami no ke, which makes sense. Because if you look at this word here, yeah, that's kind of the sense I had of it, but it's nice to see it articulated. So many of these things for native speakers too might be tricky to articulate. So this word here, ke, means like a hair. DJ has summoned a dragon. DJ lethal. Arigato, five months. So if you imagine kind of the aggregate of all those hairs, each hair added up together, and then kami, or thinking of the hair as like a mass kind of idea. Yeah, it's really the fun of language, is getting these different nuances. That's one cool thing about learning a new language. You see new shades of meaning within your own language as well. A new language can give you new ideas. For example, the grammar book I'm reading now talks about how some things in Japanese are different because Japan is so much based in nature that there are more certain natural words in certain areas. You can kind of see the culture there. Tommy, yokoso. Japanese quest away. Ika, Shin, Yoku So Shin, listen well. Let's break this down. So uh, Shin is our name. We picked our name in this game. Shin we took for the last game we played. We like to link all the games we play. This is an ongoing journey through many game worlds. The last game we played was Xenoblade 2. So we named this character after Shin in that game. So he's saying, listen well. Yoku means well. And then Kiku is to listen. This is the imperative form, so kike, listen. So listen well. Koko kara, so from here, kara is from. Koko kara wa inochi gake no tatakai ja. So from now on, from here, you will be fighting for your life. It will be a fight for survival. So, inochi is life, and gake means something like risking your life, and then no is describing this noun here, which is fight, tatakai. So, we'll be fighting for our life. Oh yeah, AJK, thanks for writing that. Actually, I kind of forgot today. Today we also, one thing we do on Japanese Quest, we learn sentences as well. I forgot to add sentences today. So, let's add this. We have an emote for it as well. If anyone else wants to subscribe, like uh, DJ Lethal did there, you can access these emotes. I recommend subscribing for free if you have Amazon Prime. And uh, yeah, let's get some hype in the chat for this new sentence that AJK wrote here. It is a kind of key sentence to this game, so it's a good one. So we have this Triforce. 
the reason is a Triforce. We uh, gained this power of adding sentences during Breath of the Wild. And when we use that, we write down a word, we add it to our Sentence Chronicle, which is a list we have at the top of our Twitch page. You can find it there, along with our power level list. Uh, and we break down this sentence in a bit more detail, so let's take a look at it. So, E means good. So, E ka, ka is a question, so it kind of saying like, so are you, can you hear me? And then he's saying, Shin. Listen well. Shin. Yoku kike. And then, Koku kara wa, Koku kara wa. So from here, you will be fighting for your life. Right. You, it will be a fight that you'll be risking your life. Let's go to our power level screen, too, because we might have some interesting words here. We can erase all of this for now. Anyone wondering, by the way, this is just all written on Microsoft Paint within the OBS streaming software, both of which are free if anyone wants to try something like that someday. You just use a filter to filter out the color white. Let's see here. Uh, what do we have? So we have the uh, the word for life. N3 word, we have learned that word. So life, lifetime, most important thing. Can be fate as well. So the second thing here is the thing we're looking for. So putting one's life on the line. Staking one's life on risking one's life. Life and death situation. So from now on, we will have a fight that will be life and death. You can see, so there's some other variants using life as well. I like this one, lifeline. You take the word rope, suna, rope, add it to life, and it's a lifeline. It's like literally a lifeline that you might have if you're diving, for example. Inochizuna. But uh, we have learned life. Let's make sure we have. Let's go to our power level screen. So yeah, we have learned that. We know because it's green, it's a duplicate. Uh, however, what do you think? Risking one's life. This word is not linked. It's not uh, listed as common. Let me show you what it's using. So... Kakeru. To wager, to bet, to risk. So you're risking your life, you're wagering, you're betting your life on something. Is basically what it means. You can see this is an N1 word. Kakeru, to bet. It can be... Also just kake as a bet, gambling. You know, let's maybe not add that one for now. We like to stick to common words, but uh, it's something to think about for the future and a cool word to look at nonetheless. Okay, let's keep going. Can I do really quick? Let's do this sound. This is the sound of unlocking that last sentence because AJK did write it. So let's see. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, that's cool to ask questions. We don't always have time for uh, every question in real time, but asking questions is fair game, and you never know. Somebody in the comments on YouTube or whatever could answer your question later. So questions are always good. That's what we do here. Let's see here. Uh, Julia Sua Toto Mananda Chikaro Te ni Irete Shimata. Sono Chikaro Osai Rarebu Monoa. Okay, so now we're talking about the power that Julius has and what we need to do to contain it. This is what we need. 
Faken. Interesting. Huh. So I thought that the this game is called Seiken Dentatsu, the Legend of the Holy Sword. But here we see it's not just called the Holy Sword in the game. It's actually called Excalibur. Eku Skariba. Excariba. O Otta Jamano Kishi. So what we need is this Holy Sword Excalibur. So does ne power up, good use of our power mode up emote, AJK. Nice. Okay. Right, so there is no other power. This again, this is a little tricky to read because it's all in Kana. Um, but Shika means only when it's eh, followed by a negative like this. So Shika Oran. So Oru means to exist. So Oran means does not exist. So there is no power that can stop him except for the power of Excalibur, this holy sword. It's the only power that can stop this evil power. So now we're asking Seiken, holy sword? Excalibur? Excalibur? What? Katsute no bandoro no bosso o kui tometa yuitsu no kibo ja. Okay. So, this empire before that we've been talking about called Bandoru. So they're kind of raging through the world. Uh, their rampage. The word I'm looking at for that is Bolsol. Uh, we might as well look it up because that's what we do here. Let's bring up the dictionary again. This is kind of a fun word. Kanji is fun. You don't see the kanji here, so it's good to see it. So... Bolsol... So acting rashly, running wildly, runaway process. Uh, the first kanji there can mean violence. Like boryoku means violence. Um, so basically this violence, the only thing that could stop it, the only hope, was this holy sword, Excalibur. So that last word you see there, Kibo, hope, certainly a word we've learned before. This is a very key word to many games. You can see common word, N3 word. Kibo, hope, wish, aspiration. So the one hope we have here is to find this holy sword, the name of the game. Seiken Densite, Excalibur. Sono toki no gemma no kishiga. So that, at that time, the gemma knights. I don't mean gemma knights, I mean like gemma knights, knights of gemma. So ga often marks important information. What ga does is it marks the subject of the verb that's coming at the end. So the subject here is these knights. So, その時の邪魔の騎士が、あなただったのですね。So that was you. Again, kind of tricky to read because it's all kana. Normally, it would be broken up a bit more, but あなた means you, so that was you. で、今その剣はどこ ？So let's pick out this word, ken, sword. So where is that sword now? Sono, that, sono ken, that sword. Sono ken wa, doko ni. So where is that sword? Doko, where, 
wa, marking this as the topic of the sentence. So, ga and wa are often talked about as being particularly confusing how they're different in Japanese. The book I'm reading right now about Japanese grammar that's for Japanese people, written in Japanese, does a pretty good job of explaining it. But the basics of it is, wa marks the topic of the sentence. So what you're talking about in the sentence, and generally something that people already know about, the reader already knows about. So this sword, for example, you know the sword this is, it's Excalibur. We just talked about it the last few lines. So because of that, we can use wa, because it's already known. Whereas ga marks the subject of the verb. So we have a, the subject of the verb or the subject of the kind of predicate of the sentence. In this case, what's at the end of the sentence, a noun. So that's what ga does, it marks the verb of the sentence, the subject of the verb, wa marks the topic of the sentence. It's an important distinction. Subject of the verb, not the sentence, but the verb, wa marking the subject, the topic of the sentence. It's confusing even for me to say, but uh, it helps to kind of break it down if you think of it in that way. And the reason I mentioned ga so wa is for things that are already established that the reader already knows about. Ga can be used for new, completely new information. Later on, we'll do something more in detail on that. Uh, Haunted asks, I wonder why Japan holds Excalibur to a holy level. Yeah, it's a good question, actually. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure myself. That's a good question. Dan says one of the best explanations I heard was that Wa puts emphasis on what follows and Ga on the previous. Yeah, that's another one that uh, is helpful. Good comment. So you see Wa and that can put focus on what's after it. So, doko. So, where is that sword? Whereas, ga can put emphasis on what's before it. This knight. So, what about this knight? That's you, right? Let's keep going. Kono sekai no doko ka ni? So somewhere in this world, it is sleeping. So what is the it we're talking about? This sword, the holy sword, Excalibur. So kono this, kono sekai, this world. Kono sekai no doko ka ni. So somewhere in this world. Apple seed arts, yokoso. Japanese quest, so welcome to Japanese quest. So it's living somewhere in this world. Kind of makes me curious. Let's go to our power level screen. Earlier we had someone named Smoked Cheese join our party as a follower. Uh, I'm curious. Have we learned the word for apple? Sometimes we do a search on here as well. You can find this list, by the way, at the top of our Twitch page. If we have not learned the word for apple, now would be a good time to do it. Uh, Basing has now joined as well. Yokozo, welcome. So Apple we have learned. Let's see, word 605. I believe we learned that playing Breath of the Wild, getting apples off of a tree. Lingo, apple. So we have learned that word. For fun though, let's look it up in the dictionary. We can level up even more with our apple powers today. 
because we've had an apple in some form at least join us. So apple orchard, so N can be a garden or an orchard. Lingo N. Often when you're learning a new word, put it in the dictionary and uh, scroll down. It can really reinforce the word with different shades of meaning and kind of crossing it with other words you might already know. Check it out, picking apples, this is cool. So tsumi can be to pick. As you can see the verb sumu, to pick or pluck. So lingo tsumi, to pick apples. By the way, I just did that like a week or two ago. I recommend doing it if you have a chance. Probably you only have a couple more months if you're in the kind of north of the US, like I am. Ooh, this is a good one. Candied apple. Ame means candy. Lingo ame. Check it out. Apple picking as well can be with the kanji for to hunt. So hunting apples, literally, but apple picking, lingo gari. We've seen this hunt kanji before on Japanese Quest. Interesting, there's like an apple sickness? This is getting weird, I don't even know. What the heck is slap cheek? Eh? Apple sickness, lingo build. Slap cheek, so like if you get slapped in the cheek, possibly, like your cheek is red. At least it looks like that. Apple cider, I got that when I was apple picking. Lingo shu, shu means alcohol, sake, when it's by itself. So this is the most we've ever lap, uh, leveled up with apples. So shin means core, that's a good one, it's an apple core. Lingo no shin. You'll notice how it's a katakana here? Usually, you'll probably see katakana used for apple. That's probably enough. Let's get back to the game. We gotta save some Apple stuff for later. Yeah, I think that makes sense, Haunted Bone. Rudy, you like anime? Other people in chat probably like anime as well. I recommend watching anime if you ever have a chance with uh, Japanese subtitles. You can do that on Netflix, which is one good thing about Netflix. Futatabi, so again, Futatabi, Wenderu no Shiba no Tokuro e Ikunda. So, we talked last time about this mm. It's often used for explanations when you're explaining something at the end of a sentence, but in this case, can also be used to tell someone to do something. So he's telling us, go to this tokoro, go to this place. The place in Wendaru where this kind of wizard dude is, Shiba, or Shiba, Shiba is his name. Uh, Rudy, why wouldn't you watch in dub? Well, I mean, which dub? I don't even know what language we're talking about. A lot of people here might speak French. You know, some people here speak Japanese. So why would you dub it? For me personally, it's much more fun to watch in Japanese with Japanese subtitles. Everyone has a different way they prefer. Uh, in general, you can learn more Japanese if you watch without English. Otherwise, you'll just look at the English or listen to the English. So, karenara. So, if we talk to this guy, seiken no koto. So, koto, no, so koto means like a thing. So, things about this holy sword that we need. He'll probably know. So shiru is to know, shiteru is to know. Favorite character in Bleach? I did not have one. I didn't watch much of Bleach. I watched 10 episodes and decided uh, I didn't want to watch anymore. That was a long time ago though. Not so into that kind of like 
I don't know. I'm sure it got better later. But not that into ghosts of that type. For ghost anime, I kind of am more into like Natsume Yujinsho. Natsume's Book of Friends. Highly recommend. So if you don't know the way, you could ask Bon Voyage. So Kiku to ask Kike. The command form, so ask this guy if you don't know the way. So the way, Michi, means way or path. So Wakaru is to know. This is the negative of that. So Wakaru nagatara. Or Wakaru nagatara if you do not know the way. Kike, ask. Yatsu wa chiri ni mo, or chiri ni mo kuwashi. So kuwashi means to know a lot, and then kara means because, so he, so because he knows a lot, you can ask him. This word here means geography. Kind of a cool word, let's look that up briefly. The kanji is interesting, which is why I want to look it up. So I see a long comment, I'll read it here quickly as we look up this word. You know, I wonder how the game Final Fantasy VIII compares the Western release. You know, the game was released with a translator mindset. Being Squall needs to be moody and cool. Huh. Yeah, I'm not sure, but often those games are changed to some degree. Right now, off-stream, I'm playing through Final Fantasy X and enjoying it. And a friend of mine said the character seems maybe a little different. Like, possibly sounding a bit more emotional in Japanese sometimes. Mute is my name. Yokozo, welcome. Welcome to Japanese Quest. By the way, anyone just joining, I am Akira. I'm a Japanese teacher in the U.S., I've taught high school Japanese, I've taught junior high, I've taught immersion. The egg dog is also joined, welcome. So this is why this is a cool word. Chidi, geography. The first kanji here means ground, earth, chi by itself. The second kanji, as you can see here, means like logic, arrangement, reason. So if you put reason or the truth of the earth, or like a way to logically explain the earth or the ground, what is that? Geography, of course. So N4 word, have we learned that yet? Let's check if we learned it. If we have not, let's make our power level go up with the power of geography. So let's scroll down all the way to our current power level. These are all the words from all the games we've played so far that we added to this list. We have not, we've now Level up with the power of geography. Tayoma, welcome. So haunted is Jet worse in the English or JP version? I don't know. I'm not that far. I haven't seen that much of Jet yet in the game. Mute says this is great. Learning a language through games. Uh, what's the difference between those two? I would say Kike is a bit more extreme. Uh, I also want to say Kite, I might hear more from a uh, like women and Kike more from men. So we've now powered up with the word with the uh, power of geography. Let's make our power level go up. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? Scouter says in the bottom right our power level is now 1336. The goal of course over 9000. Because 9,000 is about how many words it takes to be fluent in a language. Which is very convenient for Japanese Quest because that is our goal. Power level is now 1336. Sen desu ne. Cool haunted, don't worry about it. We need one more word? Ah, do we need one more word? Yeah, what does that spell out? I know what you're talking about. Is it like leet? 
We need one more word today. I think that's fair. Let's get one more word today. How about this word at the bottom? We could go there. I don't want to repress the button because that the word will disappear down there. Even though it's dark. Kelon! Eh? Yokoso! Japanese Quest away. Welcome to Japanese Quest. Kono channel de wa. Welcome. Here what we do is we learn Japanese from Japanese games. Sa Ishoni Nihongo de Ego de Bokenshio. I also teach English. えっとね、日本語も英語も教えますよ。日本語で2年間ジェットプログラムで、AOT として英語を教えました。山口県で。えっとね、山口県にいたことありますか僕はまあ実はもう1回山口県に<笑> I loved Yamaguchi, but probably I want to live in a bigger city next time. So welcome. Welcome to Japanese Quest. I live in the US. さあ、行きましょう。so next, let's learn another new word. Very useful word. As you can see, N3 word, common word. Kuashi. To know something well. And let's add this to our power level. So welcome. Anyone joining from uh, Kalon's raid there? Uh, feel free to follow if you're into learning Japanese from Japanese games or if you learn or if you want to learn English that works too. So this word here we can see it's green which means we learned it already. So we don't need that word so we're not quite to our goal yet of 1337. We're not quite there. Too early. Let's go to the next part of the game. And also, uh, check out Kelone. Check out Kelone's channel. Awesome streamer. Let's give Kelone a link here. Chotto matte. Chotto Kelone no channel o link shita. Ii desu ka? So check out Kalon, awesome streamer, very nice streamer, and they are learning English, but they also teach some Japanese and English on their channel, so check them out. I linked it now in the chat. So check out Kalon, awesome Japanese streamer. We often host them as well. Check out Kalon. Griffin. So where were we? Next we're going to talk to Bon Voyage. Over here, I believe. Remember, he knows about geography. Chirini Kuashi. Let's ask him about directions. So Danzo says we help Kalan with English. He helps us with Japanese. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for the shout out and for the context there. So yeah, check out Kalan. Again, I linked it here. Check out the link if you're watching on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is now growing as well. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can check out Type it in, switch.tv slash Kelon75. Check him out. Awesome streamer. Why 
do we shout people out? Because all Japanese teachers and learners are connected. Mina no Nihongo no Kyoshi to ka, Gakse to ka, Mina, Tsunegatte iru. We are all connected. Dakara isho ni level up shio. So let's level up together. Sa, ikimashou. Let's talk to this dude. Konnichiwa. Okay, so this is what we need to do. So let's look at the directions. Kita north. So kita no sanbashi. So that the wharf to the north, sanbashi means wharf. And then kara from. So from that wharf or that port. Umi ni dette. So go into the sea. We can do that now. Because we have this chocobo who is a robot. Robo chocobo. Teni eritane. So, uh. Higashi e. Mukai na. So Higashi means east. So we go to the sea. Then we go east. That is the goal. So, Mukai means to go in that direction. So we still need to find one more word. Let's think about what word that could be. Those words we probably have, so let's keep going, maybe. Tsukietari o kita ni ikeba. Wenderu minami ni ikeba. Anmo naito no iru. Kaigan. Kaigan dai. Okay, so we have the shore of the Ammonites. So, a kind of knights, I guess. Taskomas, welcome to Japanese Quest. Anyone just joining, by the way, what we do on this channel is we learn Japanese from Japanese games. I am a Japanese teacher, so that is what we do. And yeah, this is all in hiragana because this is an older game and it was easier to write things and read things in hiragana with the technology at the time. So what we're learning here is we need to go north first, kita, north, and then if we go south, at the end of after we go east, we will find the Ammonites, that shore, Kaigan shore. That could be a good word, potentially. Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, I know that Dragon Quest XI for Switch is just coming out, and Dragon Quest XI... I can show you, actually. So, Dragon Quest XI right here is coming out, I think, in like a week. And it does have furigana options. So it does have hiragana. Um, of course, the Pokemon games have hiragana. Right. So HAK is saying there is too much data in kanji for old games as well. So that's why they often used hiragana. Also, Animal Crossing games have hiragana or katakana. Or, I mean, Furigana. Um, also, this game, Breath of the Wild, has Furigana as well. Yep, from what I've heard, that's the case. Anyone excited about the new uh, Animal Crossing for Switch? Not sure when that's coming out, but next year, I believe. Anyone know when that comes out? Because we might want to do that for Japanese Quest. Uh, the setting for Japanese, it depends on the game. Tarchwood, good question. For example, for Breath of the Wild, you need to, set, you need to change your system setting to Japanese language. 
Same with Mario Odyssey, which also has Furigana. So here's our new mecha. So will we uh, have you help us out again? Hi! So let's ride this thing. Soldon means to talk to our Robo Chocobo, which means we now have Robo Chocobo powers, which means I think we can go over water. Uh, some games, however, have language options right baked into the game. So it depends on the game. Some games do not have Japanese unless you buy it through the Japan store. So he said go east, this is east. Higashi ni ikimashou. Let's try going south. Seems you can't go that way. So March 2020, nice. Good to know. Hopefully other people watching can figure that out as well. Looks like we have some what, octopus here. Okay. Konnichiwa. We haven't fought yet today. I think we need to do some fighting. Eh? Or not. Let's see if our other weapon works. Here, Sobi equipment. Let's try our uh, Morning Star. Yeah, new Pokemon out soon as well. True. When does that come out? That worked a bit better. Uh, Dib Monkey! Eh, so this ka? Yokata! Kyaku bitto! Arigato! Thank you very much for the bits. I'm glad that you found my answer to be helpful. Thank you very much, for, very much for the bits and all the new followers, too. I feel like I was kind of missing everyone who is following. Welcome everyone who's joined Japanese Quest. Ultra Burden! Yokoso! Welcome! Ultra Burden, that's an interesting name. <laughs> you don't have to comment, but I'm curious where a name like that comes from. Ultra Burden. Kind of, it sounds like the kind of thing you normally wouldn't want to be Ultra. Normally Ultra, you want things that are, you know, like, positives. <laughs> I feel like I've never heard that combo in my life. That's why I like looking at names as people join. Those, just like new words in Japanese, new names can give you new ideas, because they're often combinations, which is really what just creativity is, combining two things together, many names, are that. Japanese Quest, for example, was chosen, you can see it at the top here, Japanese Quest. There were many different names before I settled on this one, but in the end, I wanted to combine Japanese, the core thing we do, with Quest, the kind of core game we play. And really, when you put them together, it's really about a journey and adventure. That's what this stream is, learning Japanese from Japanese games. It started with just one Japanese teacher and one cat. Now, as you can see, there are many. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? Many others have joined us in the world of Japanese Quest. For example, Ultra Burden, 
You can see here, this is Ultra Bird, and what I like to think about that name is uh, maybe you are kind of like Goku or Rock Lee. You are training with some massive weights on your legs, possibly your arms as well. You might call them a burden, but in your case, you might call them an ultra burden because they you are so strong that you need this extra weight to help level you up. It's just too easy otherwise. So really, it's all in the framing. Ultra Burden can sound like a negative thing, but it can sound like an awesome thing as well. I'll take it as the awesome way. Anyway, let's continue to level up in the world of Japanese quests. Let's find one more word so we can reach power level one, three, three, seven. What does that stand for, by the way? Uh, Dan says for Japanese quests, it actually benefits you to be bad at games as you are exposed to more Japanese. Yeah, that's a point, too. Sometimes being bad at things is good. Sometimes being good at things is bad. The world's very mysterious in that way. Here on Japanese Quest, we like to do both. Koko de Matteru yo. So wait here. Matsu is to wait. So Matte is saying, please wait. Yaho! Konnichiwa Sumo-san! Good to see you. We are now entering some kind of weird castle where people seem to be frozen. That is correct because look at the word here. Kori. Ice. Kori tsuiteru. So he is frozen. This person is frozen. Not good. Uh, however, we are looking for one more word, so that's good. We've probably learned the word for ice. Let's see back when we learned the word for ice. Let's check, look up the word for ice here. ko o -di. So there's the kanji for ice. Kind of a cool kanji. So if you look at the kanji here, you see the kanji for water with one added dot in the upper left. You can imagine you have water, you add a little bit more coldness, even one degree, and suddenly you have ice. So we have learned that word. Let's look it up in the dictionary as well. So we have Cody ice. We have ice water. Cody Mizu. And this is what we see in the game. To freeze, so a verb form. To be frozen, so tsuku. When added to Cody, means to become frozen. This tsuku you'll see a lot for many different types of verbs. So yeah, it all works together as one verb. Koritsuku. To be frozen. Uh, we could learn that, add it to our power level. As you can see though, it's not a common word. It's not marked as a common word here. So let's not maybe add that. Let's see if we can't find another more common word. Ooh, check it out. This is a kind of cool word that you don't see much these days. The ice store, the ice shop, or the ice man. Koriya, because ya means shop. I'm guessing this is more the olden days when you would like buy ice, a big chunk of ice. It's cool to think of how language changes over time. Hey, it's Miro! Welcome! Yokozo! We have frozen tofu as well. Kori dofu. 
many different cool words involving ice. This is a good word for me because I live in the north in Minnesota. Minnesota shu de wa kori ga ippai aru yo. Lots of ice here. Let's go back to the game. So, what do we have here? Eh? Kuku. Kori tsuite. Ugokanai. So, it's frozen and will not move. Ah, Haunted Bone, good question. What is coffee in Japanese? Anyone in chat know? It's the kind of question that could be good to answer in chat because then we can see it visually as well. But good question. Coffee wa Nihongo de nan desu ka? What is coffee in Japanese? Smoke Cheese has written it. Dan or Danathro has written it as well. In katakana. Kohi. Kohi. Coffee. And I believe we have learned that word already. You can see AJK wrote it there also in can be written in kanji as well, pronounced the same way. Kind of sounds like coffee, pronounced in katakana. Kagi ga kakatteru. So it is locked. Kagi means lock here. Can also mean key, interestingly enough. So let's use a key in our items. Item. We need to find Kagi. Oh no, we just have one? No, we have four more below. Good. Eh? Also frozen. Hmm. So that's a problem. So he's frozen as well. Where do we go is the question. Harry Bison. My first thought when I saw Harry Bison was M. Bison from Street Fighter, but just really Harry. Am I far off there with uh, how you look, or is that kind of more or less how you look? M. Bison, just with more hair kind of scenario. Or is it more like a, a an actual buffalo named Harry? That's another possibility. See, if anyone's watching, if anyone's listening, learning English, you can learn some weird English on this channel. So this is kind of like a potion in the game. I think it's called candy in English. Manmaru drop. O te ni deta. Yakuza games lately you've been playing? Very cool. Yeah, it helps a lot to have voice. Normally on Japanese Quest we like to play games that do have voice acting. It is a good series. I played one of them. I forget now at the moment which one I played. Perhaps someday we'll play a, a Yakuza game on Japanese Quest. I will say though, the Japanese in Yakuza games in general is more challenging than a lot of games. Because you have a lot of kind of Yakuza type of dialect. It's very casual. We are now a Moogle. Hopefully that changes, because you can die very easily in this game, if you're a Moogle. So Donza says I played 0 and 1. Awesome. I would say start with 0, go through the Kiwami games. Sounds good. Has anyone played them in Japanese? Let's try using our battle axe here. That's not our battle axe. So 
so we have to go to Equipment, Sobi, and then... Battle Axe. Battle Axe. I played with voice acting. Yeah, it counts for a lot, but I mean, has anyone played with Japanese menus? I'm guessing probably not, unless there's Japanese listeners here. Because those games for reading are quite challenging. Even compared to other games we played on this channel, like Xenoblade 2, for example, it's harder than this game to read. There's no Furigana, for one thing. But Yakuza would be more challenging. So we are leveling up. Level up. Yatta! So, what type of power should we get? We have four options Senshi, Warrior. Monk, Monk, Mado, like a sorcerer or a magic, or Kenja, which is more like a philosopher. Which one do you think we should do? Uh, we'll quick do a quick vote. Ichi for warrior, I think that's for attack power. Uh, Ni for Monk, that is uh, more defense power. Madoshi is more like magic attack, I believe. Vote in chat, or uh, for... I think it's for kind of like will or spirit. Seishin, you can see these are the different attributes. Taiyoku, it's like stamina, chikara, power, kashikosa, intelligence, seishin, spirit. So it looks like... Uh, we see a vote for... We have a few for four. Ichi, Ni... I think we see... Magic? I'll say magic is probably... Three, right? Maho wa... Madoshi desu ne. Tabu. We have one for Senshi Warrior. So we have weeds. Weed Smoker lols. They said hi. If you want to vote, we're voting on which power to level up in. This is a channel for learning Japanese from Japanese games. Okay, so we're seeing a couple for... I think we're seeing a couple for three. Uh... I think I'll also vote for magic. Why don't we go with magic this time? Often we've been doing the monk upgrade for defense in this game. Let's do some magic attack. Kette. Decision. Let's decide. There we go. We've now leveled up. By the way, that's what we do on Japanese Quest. We level up in the game and we level up in real life. Game of death. Level up. That is the goal on Japanese Quest. To level up in all areas. As much as is possible anyway with the stream. Have you seen those uh, kind of shapes on Japanese those kind of uh, pentagons? You'll have the stats in different areas. Or maybe it's like a hexagon. Your attributes will start out very small. Maybe just like... This much... In each area. But the hope is we can increase each one. For example, this one could be... Nihongo, Japanese. So I'll just write Nihon. We can level up in Japanese. This one can level up more. Over time, we have English here. People watching, some from Europe, some from Japan. We can level up in English as well. Don't you love my drawing? This is English being maxed out because I am maxed out in English. Oh no, not anymore. All my English just disappeared. We have the game here as well, too. 
games can mark with a G. You can level up in the game as well. What a beautiful picture. So Dan says, uh, how do you say the geometric figures in Japanese? Yeah, sankaku, shikaku. Um, that's a good question. Normally you can add kaku to the number of sides. So gokaku, rokaku, I believe. Ah, uh, Fudo Forest. Konbanwa, good evening. Good to see you. Let's look at the dictionary for fun quickly, though. So yeah, kaku, if you look at here, it's a kanji that can mean a lot of things. It actually can mean antler, like on a deer, for example, like or a horn. But it can be a corner or an angle as well. So you just put a number plus the number of angles. Avengers versus Thanos. Konnichiwa. I'm glad you are fighting Thanos, by the way. Useful. Are you teaching Japanese class? Yeah, we teach Japanese. I wouldn't call it a class so much, more of a journey. A journey teaching Japanese through Japanese games. I'm a Japanese teacher. What we do in this channel every time is learn Japanese from Japanese games. I'm a Japanese teacher. I have taught Japanese in high school. In immersion setting, I've also been a translator professionally for Japanese. And uh, feel free to ask questions. We also have our videos on YouTube, some exclusive content on YouTube as well. So check out our YouTube, subscribe. Become a follower here, subscribe if you want. What we do is we uh, level up in the game. At the same time, we hope to level up in Japanese. That is the goal. Samusol. We're finally in the snow world in this game. There is a moment in every JRPG. When you enter the snow world, now is that moment. I think we need a better weapon for this moment. Let's try the Morning Star. You can see that in uh, Katakana there. Morning Star. So the question is, where are we going? Uh, what's your schedule for streaming? Good question. Uh, in the summer, we did not have so much of a set schedule. I'm thinking that most likely we will do Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday at 5 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Most likely then, and other secret times as well. For updates when we stream, you can check our you can get notifications on Twitch or on uh, our Twitter or on Discord. People often get updates on our Discord as well. You can get the update roll. So yeah, secret times just meaning it could be any particular time, early, late. I like to call them secret because it sounds mysterious. Find the more mystery you can add to life, the more surprise the more fun it becomes. What the heck are these weird wolf things? See also, they're quite... They look pretty strong. AJK, I have to go soon. Jump, matane, see you later. Ooh, we found a cave. Eh... Doku to this ne. Cave in Japanese is Dokutsu. Cave. Dokutsu. We learned a while ago on the stream. There's lots of caves in Japanese games. Are you kidding? Eh? Shinda. I completely forgot to save as well. We've been talking so much in chat. Eh? Uso. Nande? 
I can't believe I died there. We got killed by a snowman. Yuki Darumani. Yareta. How did we get killed by a snowman? Eh? Kanashi desu ne. So we died. We're killed by a snowman. Uh, we were looking for one more word. Even though we talked to these guys already, I'm kind of thinking, let's find that one more word now. The goal is to find one more word today. And I'm guessing some of these words we might not have. Uh, we talked to them already, so we're not going to look at every sentence in detail, but let's look for a, a tasty word to add to our power level today. You can see our power level in the bottom right. As we find new words from the games, our power level goes up. So the goal, of course, is over 9,000. And yeah, you know, suggestions from chat sometimes could be good. This could be a day. If you have a suggestion from chat, we can add a word from chat. So the word for word itself. So they are wolf head enemies. Awesome. That is good to know. So this word, kotoba, we've learned already, so that's not gonna work. So let's see other words. So we have some other words there. Ooh, here's one word we could learn that could be new. I'm gonna kind of highlight it on the game by writing on the screen, chotomatte. So this word here is a verb when it takes suru, suru. Ido suru, to move. By itself, ido, it means movement. And this is a useful word. Just means to move. Movement is important. Good to learn. Let's see, have we learned that yet? I'm guessing we maybe have not. So let's type that in. Ido u. Okay, we have the word there in kanji. And I was wrong. Good review. Ido movement, but we have learned that. You can tell because it's green. It's a duplicate. We must keep searching for a new word. Uh, how about that word development? Like developing a technology. Kaihatsu. Kaihatsu. We've learned that already too. Check out how, we, how many words we've already learned on Japanese Quest. The good thing about typing these in though, it's review on words that are useful to learn because if it's a repeat, that means we've seen it many times in earlier games. So this word here, Kaihatsu, development, good word, but we must keep searching. So let's keep talking. Uh, so we see another word, this word we've probably learned. Ka no u, ka no, possible. The possibility of something. What? We've not learned that? Eh? Let's learn it. My guess is we may have learned another variant of it. So, possible, potential, feasible, ka no. So let's level up with the power of possibilities. My guess is maybe we've learned Kanose. Yep, we have learned that. Also a very common word, we learned that earlier because that means like a possibility, a potentiality. Very similar meaning, but uh, that's more of a noun. This one is more of a, it can be a noun, but it's often an adjective. So, for example, in this sentence you see here, それも可能 So that also is possible. You would not say それも可能性 But you would say if you had 可能性 you could say 可能性がある So there is a possibility of something. 
So it's used a bit differently. So the possibility is there. But is there something is possible? You could say sore ga or sore mo. Kamo. That is possible. So a bit different usage, but useful to learn all the same. So our power level is now Leet. One three three seven. We have reached our goal today. One three three seven is a word that I was told in chat is important to reach today. So let's go to our the I world of Japanese what quest. Does the say about his power level? Power level is now one three three. Seven. Sen sanbyaku sanju nana desu ne. Tsuyoku natta. So we have now leveled up. That is time for me to move my standing desk up as well. My desk is literally leveling up as we are leveling up. The standing desk is rising. Our power level is rising. We have now reached elite levels. We are now unstoppable on Japanese Quest. Let's go back to the game. Now you what? I think I might leave that there today actually. Uh, let's end the stream today in the world of Japanese Quest. I will say ja! Matane, we will end the stream here. And next time we'll pick up our power level, we'll continue to increase, we'll find more sentences and break them down. That is just what we do here on Japanese Quest. So I will say, ja! Otsukare! Ja! Matane, let's make the, the cave here can be the the period on our matane here. So, ja! Matane, see you next time. Um, next time on Japanese Quest, this power level will go up more. The goal, of course, over 9,000. Haunted Bone, Gaby the Baby, <laughs> uh, Danathro, Avengers, M Mr. Poe, Ja! Matane, Ja! See you next time. Uh, let's host someone, though. We were hosted by a couple people. Let's pass on this host. Who shall we host today? Uh, it looks like Noaria is playing Dragon Quest XI and translating from Japanese into English. We've hosted Noaria a few times now. Let's host her again. She also has learned Japanese, so you can ask her questions about learning Japanese. Our YouTube, good question. Yeah, check out our YouTube. Uh, Never mind, you found it cool. It's just YouTube slash Japanese Quest, I believe. You can see it in our bottom scroll as well. YouTube.com slash Japanese Quest. It's also linked in our stuff. Um, yeah, and yeah, subscribe. We're adding to it. I'm trying to update it every day for the next week at least. We'll have some new content, breaking down menus in Japanese. Japanese game menus. Okay, so we will end the stream here. Japanese Quest will continue next time. Ja! Matane, see you next time. Thanks everyone for joining, subscribing, and uh... Ja! Matane, see you next time. Japanese Quest will continue next time.